Okay, I think we can uh, we can start the proceeding now. Um, we are all here. Uh, unfortunately, our chair, Dan Glass, who has been uh, uh, very instrumental in bringing the series to SOAS, uh, he was supposed to be here tonight with us. Unfortunately, he's not able to be here. So I am uh, uh, sort of stepping in a little bit in his, uh, in his role, although uh, I am not as an expert as, as he is. Um, but I will try my best. And uh, okay, so uh, we have uh, like a few audiences registered. We're just waiting for some more to come in. But I think I will start with a brief introduction uh, of our panelists. Uh, and then I will pass it on to our lovely panelists to take over the discussion. And then after the discussion, we're going to have uh, about 15, 20 minutes of uh, question and answer. So uh, I will suggest to the audience to put your question in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen and uh, write, type your question there and then we will take them uh, at the end of the discussion. Um, okay, so for now, I just would like to say a few words about the series, uh, how it came about and about uh, today's event. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Dan Glass uh, is an activist and um, uh, a writer, um, and he has been connected to SOAS for some time. And uh, thanks to him, uh, we launched um, a series of events uh, called Unfinished Business, Voices of the LGBTQIA plus Revolutions. Uh, and the idea was to focus on, because we are at SOAS, uh, the idea uh, with Dan was to um, uh, focus on uh, uh, the practical tools to dismantle colonial homophobic laws and try to address uh, the issue. Uh, we regards to uh, we had some events uh, um, focusing on countries across uh, uh, our region, but today we are very pleased uh, to have um, um, here uh, Monica and Magda to tell us more about the situation in Poland, because we are all very concerned that a European country is where you will expect some sort of, uh, uh, um, sort of wider understanding um, or um, is actually, um, you know, this, uh, the situation is, is actually going, going back to, to some extent. Um, and um, I, I'm very pleased to have here Monica and Magda who, are, who will tell us uh, more about it. Uh, so now just a few words about Monica and Magda, our speaker. So uh, Monica, apologies if I mispronounce your name, uh, please do correct me. Uh, Monica uh, Pasivka uh, is a, a Red Bull activist, a motorcyclist, feminist, a photographer, writer, traveler, journalist. And once a promoter of young, talented races, they quit motorcycle sports when the far-right Catholic Party took over rule in Poland in 2015. And it was urgent to take care of more important things, defending democracy and human rights. And most of the fight is, to, is for the acceptance and equality of queer people. Uh, she organizes uh, uh, pride parades uh, um, uh, in Poland, psychological support and, and crisis help for survivors uh, of patriarchy and crephobia, and, and also funding transitions. Uh, she's a member of Make Poland Queer Again and the leader of the Labda Poland Foundation and uh, loves The Chosen Family, Woodstock, Poland Rock Festival, original The Witch's Book and movies by the Wachowski. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Monica, and welcome, welcome very much uh, to be here today uh, with us. Um, we are, uh, thank you, thank you. And um, then we, we are very uh, lucky also to have uh, Magda Olzie Jemska, uh, who is a, a Polish queer feminist activist, writer, and researcher at the University of Essex, and she's living in London since 2006. Uh, her activism focuses mainly on reproductive and LGBTQ plus rights and is closely linked to her identity as a Polish migrant. Uh, she's a member of several queer feminist um, activist groups in London, including Farsa, Make Poland Queer Again. And uh, she writes about feminism, radical spaces, and activism on a blog. Uh, do check her blog, um, Angel and Witches.com and her, her, sto her story di diary um, and other collective platforms uh, such as WordPress and alphafem.com. She will tell us maybe a bit more about, uh, about those. Um, so she will be speaking about her Polish activism in London since uh, 2016. Um, so this is uh, like a very brief introduction uh, of our panelists. Um, thank you again for being here. 
And um, I will now, ah, I just wanted to say that this event is recorded. Um, therefore, um, if like attendees are not able to attend so many of them today, uh, we will share the link widely after the event so that for those that couldn't attend, they will still have a chance to hear the, con the conversation. Um, I will now, without further ado, pass it on to Magda and Monica uh, to take over the discussion and um, um, and then I will join you again uh, at the Q&A. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Angelica. And thank you for uh, pairing with us with our technical difficulties. Um, so I think, Monica, it would be good if you could start by telling us more about your activism since you're in Poland and we're talking about Poland today and I'm in London, even though I'm Polish. I haven't really uh, spent that much time in Poland recently, so I think it's it's right for you to start. Um, okay. Mm, as everyone knows, of you know, the uh, situation of queer people in Poland is really hard. Uh, especially in the last seven years, since the party called Law and Justice, who are far right Catholic po populists, um, came to power uh, in the parliamentary election, and they also have their president. Um, and since that moment, uh, the agenda, um, which is not only uh, focused not only against queer people, but also against uh, religious minorities, against uh, people of, of no religion, against um, against other nations and against other races, uh, which is not spoken out loud, but it really works in practice of the law. Um, uh, life of um, minorities in Poland really hard. Um, of course, um, uh, the politicians are being asked by journalists or in the European Parliament or whatever. They say, "Oh no, no, no in Poland we are tolerant nation. We uh, accept everybody, but uh, it's just a declaration." In the matter of fact. Um, um, oh, I, I'm sorry, I should mention first also catastrophe on, on women's rights, including almost total abortion now, introduced in 2020. Um, and um, yes, even before the, the law, uh, we didn't have um, like crucial uh, protection in the level of, on the level of legislation. No hate crime protection, no hate speech, hate speech protection. Uh, there are no kind of uh, recognition of same-sex uh, couples. And what is, I think, most difficult, um, there is no transition rule in Poland. So it's not forbidden, but it, there is also no legal procedure to do it. Uh, and... Um, people who want to correct the uh, gender mar marker in their documents and also the name and they need to sue their own parents to court for giving them bad marker in proper market marker at birth which is ridiculous and inhumane uh, and many people just uh, don't want to go through this part of it they also need a lot of uh, documents like um, from doctors which confirm that yes, you are male or you are female. Um, of course, uh, any kind of gender except of male or female does, does not exist in Polish law. But uh, this situation was the same before 2015, and since that moment, it's even worse because um, the real party also uses us as a sort of artificial threat to integrate their followers and uh, using uh, this narrative they won election in 2019 after the first term 
uh, telling everybody that LGBT people are um, going to uh, turn children into gay uh, or into perverts by uh, making uh, sexual education in kindergartens at four and teaching the masturbation, which is like a ridiculous thing even to think of. Like that was the official um, reason uh, to gather their followers against us. Um, it also, it, it not only gave them second term, but also uh, raised a lot of uh, number of hate crimes and number of suicidal attempts and uh, and a lot of uh, problems with mental health of queer people in Poland, especially uh, children and teenagers. Uh, year 2019 was also the year to, to declare LGBT free zones, which covered three, one third of Polish uh, area and population. There were um, declarations made by cities or counties or regional parliaments and um, mental health of queer people who live in those zones are, is remarkably worse than uh, people who live outside those zones. Um, so we are under the oppression from many sides and even uh, uh, more this year is again an election year and uh, election campaign have already started uh, with uh, leader of ruling party Jarosław Kaczyński attacking transgender people this time, uh, which is uh, extremely dangerous because there is very little uh, knowledge about uh, being transgender in Poland, and especially uh, Transgender people are, are not accepted by their parents even more than, than uh, homosexual or bisexual people. And uh, especially for the min for the minors, uh, acceptance and cooperation of parents is crucial for them to literally survive until they are adult. Um, so um, we are in the middle of Europe, we are part of Europe, we are part of NATO. And uh, it's um, on the level of human rights, we are going directly to Middle Ages back. That's for the short summary. Yeah, thank you, Monica. That was that was a really good summary. Um, and I guess my next question was about, uh, you know, your inspiration, what drives you? Because for me, obviously, all of those political issues are important. But personally, what, dro what drove me into queer activism is probably very similar to what drove me to other types of activism, personal stories, right? Because what happened um, in the year, I think it was 2019, wasn't it, wasn't it the attack in Białystok, uh, which is my hometown? And that really struck a nerve because it's my hometown. Um, I cried, I remember watching the the, transmission on, on on tv and i remember crying thinking about you know how painful it was even even not being there but just just thinking about you know it being my hometown so this is what drove me into becoming a queer activist um or at least more consciously more openly um so so i'm wondering what drives you personally if you don't mind talking about it um, yeah it's like um i i share willingly uh, well, I, I was there in Białystok, actually. I was marching in this, in this uh, Pride March, which was first for the city. And um, even, you know, having first um, experience in Pride Marches, even uh, those violent country protests, which happens from time to time, especially in the, in the East Poland and, and South, and uh, this rural areas where people are very religious and uh, there are a lot of followers of Law and Justice Party. But Bialystok was a nightmare. Um, there were uh, one and a half thousand uh, participants of the Pride. 
700 police officers and more than 3,000 of big thugs, violent country protesters, were the, uh, uh, the, the, they had t shirts with, with uh, Army of God uh, written on it, or um, Poland against per per uh, perverts, or um, Jesus sees you, or things like this. Uh, they first thing they prayed, like said like several prayers, and then they started to, to throw stones and firecrackers at us. And then um, I saw them targeting uh, the girl who was on a wheelchair, the person with disability. They were targeting her uh, deliberately because she couldn't uh, duck or she couldn't escape. As as uh, as quickly as the others, um, so that was the Christianity, uh, the way they they saw their mission as a Christians, and that was that was uh, that was smashing. The the, the, proper, um, the level of aggression was so high. There were like eight reported uh, injured people with with like serious injuries including like broken uh, bones and when um, there was a news like late in the evening that two teenagers beaten up um, after the pride uh, because the most violence was not even during the pride but after the pride when people tried to return homes and uh, those uh, new Nazis were chasing them and, and hunting them down in the streets. Um, so there was a news that two of them were beaten up and died in the hospital. And uh, seeing before the level of aggression there, that was completely uh, easy to uh, believe that it could happen. Later on, it revealed that there was a fake news nobody died but i think it was a miracle that nobody died um personally when me and my four companions tried to return to our car which was parked in side street we were chased by three big guys with a baseball bat and we like barely escaped us because their bat was over our heads already um that was very very um, profound feeling of the uh, injustice of a situation that somebody decides on me living or dying because that was his decision to, to hit me with that or not uh, and um, nobody should think that it's okay that it's patriotic that it's good for religion to hit a girl or any person with a baseball bat on the head. Um, those guys were inspired by local archbishop and local uh, law and justice party leader who were uh, for the f four weeks prior to the Pride Day every day put the message on media you have to defend power, defend family, defend religion against those perverts who want to rape your children and who are uh, against Christianity and stuff. And it's, um, it's really painful that it happens. And even more, it's painful that uh, it gave a second step to law and justice. Um, because it means that most of the society either that don't care or they approve that um, and this is this is inhumane especially in Poland which has uh, which is proud of the tradition of being uh, first to really to get free from the totalitarian system of, of the Soviet um, area of the Soviet uh, circle uh, and uh, the movement which started this revolution uh, in 1981 was called Solidarity. Solidarity is a great human 
um, value, is a great uh, human virtue to take care of those who are weaker than us and not to leave them behind. Um, and uh, uh, now the descendants of that movement who are in the government, what they do is totally against solidarity as an idea, as a humanistic idea, because they don't want to accept uh, refugees from other countries than Ukraine. They are Ukraine okay because they are white, they have blue eyes, they are Christians, but. Uh, on the same border, but a few kilometers away, in the, on the border with Belarus, there are people who try to get to Poland from, from Syria, from Africa, and they are being kept in a forest until they die. And so, same thing with solidarity to queer cool people. Like, it doesn't work. It's, um, it's so cynical and... Um, and cruel what they are doing to us. And and do you ask me for personal reasons or how I decided on that? Well, I think it happened to me once <laughs> to, um, to conclude that uh, my city of Szczecin is the sec seventh biggest city in Poland, but it doesn't have place where uh, young queers could meet and have support even by like you know um talking to each other and and feeling safe and think, feeling accepted i think at least in one place in stretching because there was no actively working ngo in stretching who which was doing very like this and so i thought somebody should do something about this and then second thought was if you think somebody should do something about this then it's me who should do something about this so i did and um, i started i started lambda and then uh, it grew up uh, this it was 2018 uh, the other people who joined they also wanted to organize pride so we did and the first Pride in Szczecin in September 2018 was a big success. A lot of people came and um, and it was something remarkable in the history of the city. Uh, and since then, it only grew. <laughs> like, because there are a lot of needs. And uh, so if I see needs, I try to address those needs. And uh, later on, I organized prides also in other places in the region of, of West Pomerania, which is Szczecin is the uh, capital city of. And also, what I noticed, especially in the last three years, that most people who want who, who, who come to organizations for help are transgender people or parents of transgender kids. Uh, that's why I focused on transgender people whose uh, their situation is, is uh, much harder than people of, uh, uh, of identi sexual identities uh, different than the heterosexual because um, being gay or lesbian being in a same-sex um, relationship is visible only when it happens and only uh, if you do not try to keep it secret but if person is transgender has a only choice between not transitioning and suffering from dysphoria which is extreme pain that cisgender people cannot imagine or to be exposed all the time um, and being rejected by most of parents, by most of society. Um, so uh, I focused on this uh, and now uh, the Lambda Polska Foundation works on with people from the whole country. Uh, 
and mostly uh, directing them to the specialists who can, with, with whom they can start transitioning, especially on the level of uh, hormone therapy and uh, also the girl transitioning one, depending on what they need most or uh, first. And uh, because thinking about transitioning, and when we speak transition, most people think about surgery, which is like um, needed by many, but, but it's not the first need of transgender people. Mostly it's uh, first need is, is hormone therapy. And uh, it's, it's impossible to get to this in a public health care system. And also a lot of doctors do not understand being transgender and they, they, they say that it's uh, insanity and you should go to psychiatrist, not to uh, to, to hormone doctor, for instance. And part, part of the rest are people who, uh, who uh, exploit transgender people by uh, making them come uh, to them, to, to, to these doctors very often, and of course, all the everything that is paid, so it's sort of like source of money for them. Um, so I have a database of uh, those doctors and psychologists who are okay, and the foundation pays for the visits uh, for the people who cannot afford it, and especially now, but even before this crisis and before this inflation thing, uh, private visits are something that it's not affordable for regular people in Poland, especially teenagers, especially teenagers not supported by the parents, especially for people who are uh, for years in, the, in depression because they suffer from dysphoria. And so uh, they suffer from an anxiety and trauma and uh, being afraid all the time. It's not the best way to, to be to earn money uh, and so uh, to, to, to save some money after you spend it on, on, on living. Uh, I'm not sure if I answered your question. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think you did, and um, but I also want to talk about because obviously it's it's pretty easy to to forget about the positives of the movement. So I want to also talk about the inspirations, the positive inspirations, and the joys of being part of a movement. So for me, you know, it's 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 usually in the moments, right? So once or twice we danced outside of the Polish embassy. <laughs> as part of a protest, but still it was a very joyful moment and I don't think I'll ever forget that. Um, also things like, you know, international solidarity. So when you came, uh, was it last year or the year before? Uh, I think it was the year before now. <laughs> Time just flies when you're having fun. Um, when you guys came over from Poland, you and a few other um, queer activists, you know, and we had uh, a series of events that was really um, inspiring for us for many reasons. Um, partly because we often think about, we often question ourselves, right, when we do solidarity activism, because we're not there. So what's the point? But it really means a lot to people elsewhere, to people who are in the middle of it. And we always hear that whenever we have these connections, right? Um, so I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about what inspires you positively um, in the movement and outside, if there's anything outside. Okay, so, well, um, being a queer activist in Poland is really not the healthiest ho hobby ever, uh, because it it really connects with a lot of pressure and oppression and being harassed by the authorities and being rejected by parents. Like in my situation, my parents rejected me and they, they, they are ashamed of me and they pretend I know their the child. But uh, on the other hand, uh, there are quite a lot of situations when people contact me in this or that way. Like they, they approach me after some protests because they're like 
about floods in many topics here. Um, or they write email or they write uh, on Facebook that what I did saved their life literally. Like they, they got their home therapy and they came out of depression and out of out of uh, problems and uh, like suddenly again and uh, have hope for the future. I remember in a short time when I met uh, at one pride there was a girl who was like looking at me and, and walking around but she was too shy to, to approach so I approached her and her friends and I like, said hello, how are you, where are you from? And uh, it was in the city of Koshani at the Pride, and, and the girl who was 15 years old, she said um, that she attended Pride in Shuji uh, a year earlier, and that changed her life. She found a courage to come out to her uh, friends and parents. And she comes from this little town, so she's the only person in the town that she knows she is queer. And she feels a little lonely, but uh, participating in Pride was the great feeling of being part of the big family. And, uh, and she was really happy and thankful about this. And two weeks later, the women's rights protest, an elderly guy. Uh, approached me saying hi, so we talked, and, and he said, like, uh, he's 70. And uh, only since the first Pride Initiative, he's happy in his life. He never experienced that before, because only uh, during this Pride, uh, having this experience, he accepted himself, and uh, He's happy with who he is, and uh, and that's that was very like life changing moment. Uh, so this guy struggled with his identity for over half a century. So I was really honored um, to hear that the event I organized could make him happy in this. The years of his life he has left, it's better late than another, especially that a lot of people from his uh, generation didn't live long enough uh, to, 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 be, to be alive now because, you know, of HIV, because of addictions that were harvesting uh, uh, a lot of lives. And... Uh, I find the, those like personal meetings when people say that what I am doing, what the organization is doing, what the movement is doing, changed their lives, their own biographies. This is sort of um, mind blowing thing. I think kind of the drug because um, you get addicted to this in a way that even if if activism costs us a lot on personal level, then remembering that we think, okay, but we cannot stop, we cannot give up. Uh, because it's like there are other lives to save, you know. Uh, um, maybe the one thing for me which is, which makes me, which keeps me going is the and I know that, okay, I can, like, you know, immigrate. I can go to, to Berlin, which is really close to here. I have a lot of friends there, and it's fun with my child life is there, so I could move, like, every moment. But uh, those teenagers, nine teenagers, they will not move. They, they cannot immigrate. And um, we want them to suffer the same things. We were suffering... And we don't know the others who are like uh, kids now who are not born yet to have to go through the same path of pain of growing up queer 
And a society when nobody accepts you, nobody understands you, and when you feel alone, and when you feel uh, sort of ill or sort of insane or sort of uh, sinful. Uh, so that's why we want to change problems. Um, yeah, I was, you know, I was once uh, young, uh, married woman, I had my time of, of happiness. So I think now, um, yeah, I, I, I feel like I own this to, to uh, um, those who uh, had struggled 100 years ago for me to have voting rights, for instance. And so this is something um, that uh, if I had a happy life once, uh, that, that I want the others to have their happy lives, at least once in their lives. Uh, I don't care about my own happiness anymore that much because I had my happiness already. Thank you. Mother, I, think, I think we should... Sorry, go ahead. And, um, yeah, I, I wanted uh, to add that we are very thankful here on the grounds uh, for everybody who cares about what's happening here and who uh, acts outside Poland, like you did in uh, London, uh, making the protests. Uh, because um, it, gives, it gives us a lot of strength and a lot of uh, energy uh, that we are not forgotten. Poland, you are not forgotten. And uh, that outside of this you know, sandbox of our country, there are people who care and uh, who want our part of world also to be just and safe uh, for everybody. So thank you so much for the things you are organizing there in London. Uh, yeah, on, and on that note, I think um, it's worth mentioning that we're planning a trip in the summer. I'm very excited. Uh, we're going to visit some prides. And we're going to promote uh, Dan Glass's new book, which is about uh, queer history here locally. But we're hoping to make connections with Polish history and Polish queerness and Polish queer movements, obviously. Um, so keep an eye out for uh, more news. I think the schedule of Dan's tour locally has already been announced. So if anyone's interested in joining here, that will be definitely possible as well. Um, so maybe you can also talk about a little, a little bit more about ways that people can support remotely um, if they want to show their solidarity with Poland. Yeah, that I can miss. That people from from abroad can support us. Uh, first, was practiced a lot during this um, outburst of uh, LGBT free zones uh, because we are cities or counties or regions are connected. We have these two partnerships, um, which sometimes is longer than like twenty years. It lasts for decades that they have like cultural exchange or youth exchange programs. And so, uh, um, during that time, uh, activists from the cities or regions, which were uh, partners of those in Poland who had uh, LGBT free zone declaration, they informed their their uh, local authorities about the situation and uh, the partnerships were either suspended or cancelled by many uh, of uh, the local authorities outside of Poland and, uh, and uh, also it, it, uh, it has the practical uh, effect of getting less money from the European Union with, which uh, sometimes uh, is a reason that after a year or two, this declaration will be thrown by their own authors, but of course they do not 
Kinder sind nice, they just want the money. Uh, this is the, the good tool with the, uh, with the pressure. Shatid, um, which is city in the uh, western, west north corner of Poland, is not covered by LGBT female or here close to Germany, close to Scandinavia. And the cities I would say the most open handed in Poland. Uh, but our city hall was contacted by um, a city hall of Lincoln and of Greifswald, which are partners of of city hall in Szczecin. And uh, with a question like, are you or are you going to be LGBT free zone? Because we will not accept this as a key zone values. Um, and city hall and so well, now you are like welcoming everybody and city hall made the declaration of being uh, friendly to everyone including and it was like within in, in uh, words uh, 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 people of all gender identities and all uh, sexual orientations which was like second in Poland such a such a declaration and the other thing that we can do together is to connect uh, to, uh, uh, to make our uh, organization to be partnership. Like uh, uh, if someone is a part of the organization and uh, they can contact uh, other organization in Poland and have sort of uh, Mm, cooperation, like visiting each other for the prides, or uh, when uh, in, in, in play in August prides, you can make a display for Poland, like a sign, and uh, or sort of uh, performance within the pride that uh, reminds people that uh, is, that in, in Poland situation is still very bad. And uh, if there would be a possibility to travel, it's always great for us in Poland to, to host you, uh, especially during our prides. Um, and if organizations from UK could um, uh, uh, have a possibility to host other activists or queer people, it would be for us also great to go there. Um, I was organizing big trips to Berlin mostly because it's like you know, two hours drive, but it's like 40 minutes in time, the trip in time, you know, and it gives a lot of strength to, to uh, young uh, course traveling with me for the Pride or for other events to see the world where people like, can kiss each other in the streets and nobody beats them up. Or like where people can you know wear whatever they want and have colorful hair, and nobody attacks them on the street. And so, uh, you know, pride is the you know, great joy, and uh, it's uh, the holiday of the whole uh, in our community and all the people. And so, what we need a lot is funding. This is very uh, awkward topic to 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 mention. But we suffer from uh, having not enough money uh, to uh, work. Um, especially that our enemies have a lot of money to work against us. On many levels, neo-Nazi uh, organizations and uh, radical Catholic organizations are being heavily funded from the government uh, using this or that kind of legal tricks to give them huge amounts of money. Uh, this organization which coordinated country protests in uh, Białystok was given an um, amount of, uh, that equals of oh, more than half a million pounds uh, soon after this. Uh, country protests, so they were rewarded for that, and um, also other amazing organizations get money uh, that they must um, especially to, to uh, execute uh, strategic lawsuits against public participation, 
like we are recording every single thing that we are doing and then they sue us to the court or or inform uh, prosecution for like whatever reason and that takes a lot of time and uh, and, and energy to to uh, uh, get through this uh, trials I was also like you know I'm a survivor of it as well <laughs> um, and so, uh, uh, most of us work uh, voluntarily without being paid, uh, but we can, we, we need like money for, you know, to buy a printer, to uh, pay the trip, uh, to organize, to, to, to pay uh, the rent of, um, if, if we have an office where um, young people can gather, we have to pay rent for that. And uh, what is most needed is to, par to pay psychologists, uh, therapists, to take care of, of queer people who are in a mental health crisis because of the situation. Uh, that that um, it's like you know, vast amounts of money and for paying for transitional procedures. And I'm not mentioning surgery, but those who can people can uh, who are needed to for for uh, legal transitioning and hormone uh, therapy uh, and this is this is the biggest need uh, because this is important because it saves lives like literally uh, uh, and it helps people who want to who, who, who struggle to survive especially like teenagers uh, and our organizations have like websites where the, where we put our uh, bank accounts. Uh, so uh, well, we have also like crowdfundings, and it's uh, it's then it's easy to chip in um, one pound in in UK uh, has completely different power of, of paying for things in Poland. It's much more uh, here. So uh, that's uh, every penny counts, I would say. Yeah, this is, this is our, our huge need. If you would like to support my uh, foundation, it's called Lambda Polska. Uh, and the website is landapolska.org um, and there you will find links for crowdfunding or bank account number. That's great. And I've been making a list of things um, that people can do. Um, so I think it would be useful if we could... Um, Angelica, I don't know if you are with us. Uh, we could yeah. we could send out a, real, a list on on the event page or something of, of how people can support. Absolutely, yes, yes. Uh, we can. Um, uh, uh, yeah, if you can send me the list, I can attach it to the recording, and then when we share in, uh, we can share the, all those information and those website. Absolutely. Yes. Great. Great. Did we have any um, anything in the Q and A that you wanted to raise? Um. Okay, so we can, uh, yeah, we can see the discussion. I mean, um, there are at the moment many questions in the Q&A, but um, um, we can sort of open more the discussion among um, ourselves and then um, and then hopefully some um, question will come through. Um, but yes, if you, um, if perhaps uh, maybe it would be nice to hear also a little bit more about uh, Magda, your experience as a, um, an activist from abroad. Uh, and um, as as uh, Monica said, you know there are ways in which uh, we can support. But perhaps you can tell us a bit about your experience uh, of activism um, uh, from from the UK, uh, because um, exactly as I as I was saying earlier um, to you, is is quite striking to have a country in in Europe where you would expect um, a different sort of uh, understanding. Um, mm -hmm. And um, and also yeah exactly so within uh, the European Union what kind of um, you know push there can be and how come 
um, this is, has been allowed to uh, to go forward uh, without being stopped, uh, sort of uh, from high spheres to some extent. It would be interesting to to hear, uh, yeah, a bit more about Magda experience and um, mm -hmm. and how uh, we can sort of push more those uh, those, those situations within uh, within Europe because exactly it could set precedents. It could allow other countries to feel uh, that it's easy to. Uh, go, you know, and, and the crush human rights that has been built over uh, many, many decades. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, for me as, so I got involved in activism, uh, I've been involved in activism for about a decade, but I've been involved in Polish activism specifically since 2016, like Monica mentioned before, it was around the time when, when Piece the 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 part the right wing party came into power in Poland, and things started shifting towards the right. And one of the first things that were attacked were reproductive rights, even though at the time already, the right to abortion was quite limited in Poland, one of the most restrictive um, um, abortion laws in Europe. Um, there was a sudden drive to limit it completely, even in cases of rape and fatal uh, abnormalities and the risk to the, 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 the mother's health and all the exceptions, they wanted to ban them. Um, so that was the point when kind of the, the Polish activists in me woke up and, but then it didn't really click with the queer part of my identity until the attack, like I said before, in my hometown in Poland. And that, I think, that was a real kind of awakening point in terms of how the violence seeps into the mind of the state, right, and the society, because that was, I think, the, the stats that Monica presented before of, you know, how many protesters there were, how many anti-protesters there were, were already astonishing in the level of violence. But one of the things that shocked me about that event um, was the permission from the church, right? The, not just the permission, the open, open admission that they are behind it, right? There was, as the violence was happening on the other side of the town, there was a major figurehead of the Catholic church giving a speech saying that what's happening is good. And how can, you know, how can, what kind of, um, you know, disjunction in somebody's mind does one have to have in order to, as a representative of the church, which is supposed to be, you know, supposedly, at least in the version of the story that I was told as a child, hence perhaps the shock, even though if you think about it more critically, perhaps the church is more violent um, from the start. It was supposed to be about love and compassion and all those things. And suddenly you had this priest who is openly condoning street violence, right? So that's a kind of, I mean, I, I haven't been to church for many years before that, but that was kind of personal awakening point on many levels for me. So, yeah, how does it happen? I think, you know, I think it's very complex because it's linked to Polish history. It's linked to um, this idea that we owe something to the Catholic Church, right? There's this idea, there's this martyrdom idea in the Polish historical identity, which tells us that somehow the Polish Pope was solely responsible for freeing Poland from communism, right? Which is complete bullshit because like Monica said before, it was the solidarity movement, right? But there is this massive, massive narrative, right? That it was the Polish Pope somehow, like this Jesus figure, right? Creating this miracle, it's complete lunacy, but it is there, it is there and it's there in the Polish consciousness. And uh, I also don't want to be misunderstood because I don't think it's also just a Polish problem, right? Because it's very much an international problem, right? There's been a shift to the right for quite some years throughout, you know, it, it's not a coincidence that the election of the Peace Party in Poland almost 
not quite, but almost exactly coincides in time with the election of Trump in America, right? And not just that, there are other countries as well. There are other examples that you can give. So I think there's, there's something, there's an interesting point that we live in and historically and, um, you know, even here, um, one of the most, you know, I, I, I spoke about the joys of being in the movement before, but one of the most shocking moments of the last few years for me was when we were prevented by the police from drawing chalk rainbow on the pavement outside the embassy, right? Which we've done many, many years before. And then suddenly last year, they told us that it's illegal and we could be arrested for it. I mean, it's chalk, right? It's something that comes out naturally with rain. It's not like we were spraying it, it was just chalk. And yet we proceeded to have this really long conversation, which was completely ridiculous again. So, and I think that was around the same time that the law around protest was being becoming more strict here um, after the pandemic, right? Because the government was using the pandemic to justify its move towards the right again. Um, so yeah, it's, I think it's happening all over the place and I don't think it should surprise us. Perhaps Poland is uh, an extreme example, at least as, you, as far as Europe goes, but it's not, unfortunately, it's not an exception, I don't think. Yes, thank you. Yes, it's very interesting uh, as you uh, talk also the role of the church. And uh, again, uh, you know, it shows all this uh, disconnection uh, because on one side, sometimes you hear even the Pope uh, trying to be open minded and then trying to present uh, this idea of, you know, the Catholic Church, you need, you need to be kind, you need to support people. And uh, or the Archbishop of York. Uh, he said in the news that you know he will support um, um, gay marriages, and if so, there are so many different uh, messages being being sent uh, from the church. Um, but I I completely agree with you. Yes, is a is is a complete disconnect world we live in, where uh, rights that used to be given are now being challenged, and uh, for people. Uh, like us, like myself, I'm 50 years old, you know, you just feel really at risk of, 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 of so many, uh, undermining so many rights. So I completely agree with you. Yes, it's not just Poland. Um, and um, and it's, it's happening across, I mean, I'm myself, I'm from Italy, originally, uh, even if I live in the UK for nearly 30 years now, but again, in Italy, it's the same situation going on with the rights, taking power, and then started to challenge it, this idea of the family. Um, in Italy, we have this challenge of what is the, fam the family, again, complete sort of uh, going back to medieval time of this idea of, uh, you know, the reproductive of the family, whatever that means, because we live in a world where families, the concept of families is, is so diverse now, but then again, you've got politician taking power and just trying to dismantle complete uh, that that vision. Um, so yes, it is. I completely um, agree. And is um, sometimes yeah, you do feel like um, you know, are, are we going backwards? Are we actually com going completely behind the mind? And is that our future now? Um, so also yes, also the role uh, of the new generations, the social media. Uh, again, as well, complex, so many polarized uh, vision. And um, so it is, yeah. So I mean, perhaps, Monica, you want to comment on that? Thank you for, for mentioning the role of, of religion and Catholic Church in this whole picture, because um, this is a quite important thing uh, in Poland. When, uh, it's been for like two ages um, during the whole 19th and 20th century that Catholic religion was so intertwined with national uh, identity, especially after um, having been surrounded by you know, Orthodox Russia and Protestant uh, Germany and uh, um, in Czech, where the, uh, also uh, Protestant traditions were very strong. And so, so this myth of, of uh, 
church, which is the, the main uh, power that uh, made Polish national identity survive, and then uh, John Paul II being um, sort of you know, made uh, icon of uh, of uh, being. Uh, of point in democracy again and and free from from Soviet domination and you know uh, it's more than 30 years uh, since Poland is black democratic country and and 17 years since Pope died well it's still the cause of John Paul II is a, a huge factor uh, and of whole Polish mentality, especially like you know, all the generations. Uh, what's and it's not uh, by chance that uh, in the year when Pope died, uh, Pope John Paul II, uh, there was uh, quite let's say leftist government in in, in Poland. There are not many really leftists on economical level, but on this um, uh, philosophical uh, society norms level, they were quite leftist. And so uh, that was the time when the bill about same-sex relationships being recognized in the law was already in Parliament. And when uh, Paul Fontella died, the party itself cancelled the, the bill to this uh, the official reason spoken out loud to the press was it's a gift to John Paul II to honor his death that we withdraw the bill which is you no know, insane and so but what is more, more uh, uh, problematic that uh, those very uh, conservative movements uh, who are anti-gay and anti-choice at the same time. The biggest organization is called Ordo Iuris, uh, but they are connected with World Congress of Families and, uh, and uh, American Congress of Families and other uh, conservative radical uh, organizations uh, lobbying um, let's call uh, limitation of queer rights and women's rights into the state law all over the world but they are also uh, connected to, directly to uh, Kremlin to Russia which was proven by um, some uh, journalist investigations made by one by Clemente Mesuhani the other by Danny Boni and then uh, Mm -hmm. And the, the biggest proof was that when you know war in Ukraine started, and the tra bank transfers from Russia were blocked, uh, the organization or the units which had the budget of two million euro a year uh, for for many years they had like this this kind of money. Suddenly they uh, started to crowdfund because they said like we do not have money more. It was the same moment. So, um, in those movements try to uh, uh, to destabilize the democratic countries because they are weaker then by hitting on women's rights and by hitting on queer cool rights and minorities' rights uh, because those groups are easy to target and. Uh, and it's sort of um, uh, making the society see that people are not equal. That there are people who have more rights and people who have less rights. And if you want to have more rights, then keep with us, be obedient, so we will take care of you. And so uh, that was same thing was happening 100 years ago in Nazi Germany, in um, uh, Italy, um, and, the same, and, and also in Soviet Russia uh, when Stalin was uh, the leader of it. Um, 
And this is the way to break democracy because democracy is based on the idea of equality. Everybody has voting rights and everybody is equal. And uh, if you will wipe out equality, then you can turn very easily democracy into authoritarian system like Hitler did. And um, uh, also, uh, this anti choice movement uh, doesn't care at all about children, doesn't care about uh, people with disabilities. You know, the narrative, what they say, has nothing to do with what they do. But what is the real reason behind is to show who decides. Because before the anti-abortion uh, bill, uh, two years ago, we had only 1,000 legal abortion a year in Poland, it's, which is not much. They don't care about this 1,000 abortion. They want to show us who decides. And it's, um, that's why they hit on uh, you know, self-determination rights. Uh, queer rights are also self-determination rights. When somebody says, my gender identity is not what you were thinking. Or uh, when somebody wants to, to join and uh, in life person the same gender. Mm. Also, this uh, radical feminist against uh, uh, trans rights. This is uh, something that Putin was directly supporting, and uh, because it splits, uh, let's say, leftist uh, NGOs, human rights NGOs, and movements into parts, so they are weaker. And um, this war, this ideological war, is not only about um, those women who were forced to uh, carry on <clears throat> with, with uh, pregnancies and they died or they had to watch their ch children die right after the birth. It's not only about those uh, teenagers who were beaten up in the Westock, but it's about the future of Europe as a democracy, uh, democratic part of the world. Uh, and this is the bigger picture we, we really quite often for, forget about. Um, if if we are you know if we lost track of of uh, protecting democracy as uh, uh, something that means that everybody is uh, included, then we are on the, on the right way to authoritarianism. Um, and. Uh, one more example I wanted to give is that uh, in Poland, right-wing politicians and right-wing activists very often says, say that uh, um, people are not people, it's an ideology. This quotation from, from uh, President Andrzej Duda, who now is serving second term. Something he said in his uh, electional campaign. And it didn't cost him uh, the position, it won him second term. Telling that queer people, queer is not people, it's an ideology. And the guy who said, um, let's stop with this bullshit about equality because the, the queer people are not equal to normal people. Uh, now he is a minister of science and education. In, in another country that would cost him uh, the position and the whole career. But, but if he was promoted here, and uh, has a lot of power. And so uh, we have very ridiculous uh, law that says that somebody offends religious feelings can be jailed for two years. And uh, in my liberal city of Szczecin, uh, last year, a, a person sprayed pentagram on a uh, like sweet figure of Mother Mary, not, not like piece of art, but something very um, common. And then the guy was jailed for a year when, you know, rape, ra rapers are not jailed very often and they have, you know, this probation time. Uh, instead of being jailed. So it shows 
what set of values are important to our authorities and what is more important than, than alive humans. Uh, it's uh, the figure of, of Mary Mary or uh, the statue of Jesus Christ in Warsaw where uh, queer activists hang the flag and they were jailed for that, uh, using a lot of you know, force of the police to find them and, and stuff. So um, this is a, like putting the whole idea of, of democracy, but also about, uh, of Christianity, of message of Jesus Christ, uh, which I was a great fan when I was a kid. And I still you know, admire this figure, you know, being religious and more, that uh, liberty and human beings are most important uh, because for, for our authorities, it's uh, their ideas which are more important than life humans. Mm. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Monica. I mean, absolutely, it's so poignant with what you're saying and very, very, very uh, important and true. Um, I'm, I'm just uh, mindful of the, of the time, and we have uh, two questions from uh, <coughs> Jarolas Kubia. Uh, Kubia, if, sorry if I mispronounce your name. Uh, Jarosla, Jarosla uh, maybe you want to. Um, ask your question, I can now uh, open your mic. So instead of me reading uh, your question, you can perhaps uh, ask them yourself. So I, there you are. Uh, okay, you can unmute now. And if you would like to make your comment, that would be really nice. Um, hopefully you can, you need to unmute, I think, and then you can ask your question. Yeah. Cześć, Jarek. Jesteś z nami? Uh, yeah, he just has to... Uh, yeah. Well, yes, I'm here. Thank you. Uh, I was really puzzled to ask this question, but I'm really happy that we're talking about Polish queer rights in during the, you know, during those events. I'm very... Uh, I, I met Monica and I know Magda forever, so we've done a lot of good stuff. And I feel a little bit called out now because <laughs> I, I don't really have much to say because I'm so unprepared. I only learned about this event like last minute. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna, I, I'll be very brief, you know. I, basically, you know, Polish queer rights, uh, uh, attack on Polish queer people and, and LGBTQ rights have been, you know, intensified, obviously. But uh, I would like to bring a point that the moment the Poland joined the European Union, hundreds of thousands of Polish LGBTQ migrants left Poland because they could. Lots of people, lots of people stayed over. Lots of people stayed in Poland and fought, and fought but some of us, uh, we were young, we wanted to have a better life now, not in 10, 20, 30 years. And out of this, we, 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 we realized that, you know, especially, I mean, I can speak for London and the UK, we, but, you know, more than a decade ago, we started organizing locally because, you know, we were like, oh, so there's so many of us, why don't we just do something? And we, in, since 2018 and 19, we organized a lot of, protests but also we 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 do good stuff we 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 we, we socialize we march during the uh, during the pride in london almost every year and as much as you know and and even especially during the pandemic i remember we've managed to like magda i think mentioned that we've managed to meet so many times outside the polish embassy trying to draw rainbows and chalks and have be a voice of be a voice of the Polish queer queers in abroad and in, in London and you know due to lots of personal struggle I had to step away from my activism a little bit last couple of years because as Monica mentioned being an activist sometimes you forget about yourself and it's 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 it it, it has a lot of impact on, on mental health and and personal life but I think one of the mo I, one of the points I really wanted to make is amazing intersectionality and solidarity during the 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 
part of the Polish migrants who want to engage and support Poland, you know, we might be different politically sometimes from, you know, like neoliberal, a little bit of like a, you know, centrist to left to hardcore socialists like myself. But when we meet outside the Polish embassy, when we dance, when we cry, when we, you know, it doesn't matter if, you know, women's rights, queer rights, freedom of justice system, all that stuff. It's, it's, been, it's been very powerful. And I think it gave us another platform to connect as migrants as well. So, uh, and seeing lots of lots of other initiatives like Edinburgh Queer Collective, for example, uh, who did a lot of stuff in Scotland. Uh, people in, uh, there were some folk doing stuff in, 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 in uh, I think, in Cardiff, Bristol, especially in 2020, when uh, the case of Margot happened and lots of Polish activists were, were detained in Poland. We had so many solidarity demos organized by local queer Polish migrants in, in London. I think that's, oh, that, that's also very important that we might have left and sometimes we feel a little bit guilty that we could have stayed and fight and put our bodies in front of so-called homophobic buses or homo buses, you know, the, I hope the Monica maybe can say a little bit more about it, the, the little the, the vans which are traveling around Poland. Uh, and one last thing I remember just before the pandemic, we had this amazing idea that, you know, to make Poland queer again. And the idea was to just travel on many buses and any sort of transport invade Poland with queer love. And the pandemic happened and we, 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 we got stuck we got stopped in our trucks, but uh, I'm really glad that people like Magda and Dan and Monica and some other other people who we kind of like I could pass the button on to them, and it was great to 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 you know to have put a little bit of into that project. But we hope that one day we're gonna get a tour bus, paint it all the colors of the rainbow, and invade Poland with queer love. Thank you for letting me speak. Uh, thank you. Love thank that. you so much. Fantastic. Brilliant. I'm so glad you came in. And um, yes, I mean, it, it's, uh, yes, as you know, activism and solidarity uh, is, um, is obviously the, the most powerful tool. And um, hopefully that will continue and it will bring, you know, more people on board as well, sort of metaphorically and also practically on your buses. It would be nice to hear from Monica, uh, yeah, about the buses in Poland because I, I'm not so aware and it sounds a uh, very interesting and also what, what's happening now. Uh, homoph homophobic buses, we call them homophobes. Uh, <laughs> they appear uh, before the prides in a city where Pride is going to be held. Uh, it also came to Szczecin last summer, so uh, when we got a kind of signal that it drives around the city center, we were blocking it. Uh, with, uh, but, you know, Szczecin is, I would say, liberal, and it also applies to, to police, which didn't uh, harass us in front of, you know, other citizens and uh, animals. Uh, and didn't use the, the physical force. They only like you know asked us to show in the units. Uh, then we had to go to the police station and, and speak some speak with them. I I didn't uh, I refused to take the ticket for blocking the traffic. So uh, I'm going to have a, a trial in court for that. But I also put the. Uh, uh, so against this homophobic bus driver uh, for the formation and for uh, hate speech and also for really the end of the pride because uh, he, his car was parked at the place that the pride was finishing. Uh, there were so powerful loudspeakers that they were stronger than our loudspeakers. Uh, speaking out that uh, yes, we are like you know, perverts, that we uh, are pedophiles and stuff. 
and the other one is to mobilize pedophilia. Um, yes, and uh, this is something that is happening in Poland for many years, has been happening, and uh, central authorities, of course, know nothing about this. And uh, it's us, like NGOs, who try to oppose this 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 crazy thing, like you know, car riding around the city, and uh, he's playing like picture of two guys uh, with naked butts and speak in that with uh, the the, 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 the uh, subtitle that. This is something we want to, you know, do to your child or stuff. You know, the, the private organizers want your child to be like this. And uh, with the lies about uh, pedophilia and its connection to pedophilia. And, uh, but uh, when it comes, goes to the court, um, um, it takes a lot of time first. So the sentence can be after a year or two. And then the uh, put the, 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 the apply to the second uh, degree court. So there, there is no valid sentence yet. But at least what we have is um, uh, sentences in Gdansk and I think in Krakow that the court said that what you write on this uh, on this track, what is written there, is not scientifically proven. Um, so the um, research uh, they say it's based on is not the part of the um, of the of the scientific commonly uh, accepted researches. Which is true because it's some sort of like camera making uh, research on population of gay um, incarcerated people, like uh, criminals, and comparing it with like regular citizens. And it's, uh, this, this is completely scientifically invalid. But it was printed somewhere and they they print it on uh, the track and they say, but it's scientifically proven. And in 2020, uh, the, the second year or, or 23, we need the court to say uh, to this guy, to this organization, because it's one of the other circle, and when uh, you say it's scientifically proven, but most of scientists does not uh, consider it science, and what you do is harmful to the huge group of people. Mm, and you know, it's, uh, and it's still uh, that doesn't work on a practical level because the synthesis are not valid yet, not confirmed. It's still in progress. So. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah, thank you, thank you so much, Monica, and uh, and your what's been. And uh, we only have like a few minutes left. Perhaps uh, Magna. Uh, do you want to come in and make some final comment uh, before we close uh, today? And then, as I said, the event is recorded. So uh, this discussion, let's uh, all of us try to share it across our networks. And um, for those people that could attend, because it's been such an uh, interesting conversation that we really should try to, um, to share it widely. Uh, so I just wanted to thank everyone, and uh, but perhaps Magda, uh, I'd like you to uh, say a few final comment. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us and um, for the solidarity and hopefully you will keep in touch. I think um, just to just maybe just a brief thought, um, linking back to some of the international funding rings that Monica was talking about. I think it's interesting to note that they are also, they're very much international, including here, because I think a lot of people are not aware, they think that everything is fine here, you know, and, and our consciousness kind of goes to sleep, but it's not like that at all. I mean, one of one example, just from my own personal experience, a few years back, there was a fairly big anti-choice march in London, which is the first time in my memory that I have seen something like that and the placards I kid you not 
they were like copied from an anti-choice rally in the US. They didn't, they looked so out of place in London, completely strange. So you can see clearly, plain as day, right, without doing any research, that this fund, that their funding definitely comes from somewhere else, right? And you can say with fairly good level of certainty, just by looking at how they present themselves, that it's not in this country. So I think we need to be very vigilant and we need to be very aware that this is very much an international movement and we cannot let ourselves fall asleep. And that's why we need solidarity. Absolutely, yes, uh, I completely agree. Thank you so much. Uh, so yes, let's share all those links because exactly, absolutely, funding is essential. Unfortunately, we live in a world where, you know, if you uh, don't have uh, money, you have no voice. And so uh, it's sad, uh, it shouldn't be like this, but unfortunately is that is like that. And we also have to play that game. So let's share all those links and uh, trying to really, uh, you know, announce the support because that's the only way uh, forward is the solidarity, is the support. And as you said, the international support because this is affecting so many different countries across the world, absolutely, including the UK. Sometimes you're right, Magda. Sometimes we feel like, oh, in the UK things are better, you know, but what does it mean actually? You know, there are, uh, there are a lot of uh, issues uh, still affecting this country as well. So I completely take your point of looking at it as an international movement that has to be, uh, um, you know, promote, supported in, in that kind of way. Um, okay, so we can we come to the end of our time, unfortunately. Uh, it was really, really interesting to meet you and to talk to you. So again, yes, let's stay in touch. Uh, let's keep uh, talking and keep pushing the boundaries. Uh, because that's what we can do. Um, and we have to like not give up. And uh, so constantly, and this is what these events are about as well for us. So I was trying to kind of keep the conversation at the, um, keep talking about it, a lot of different forum, the more the better. And uh, so uh, let's stay in touch. And as I said, um, um, please send me the link. I will be in touch by email with Monica Magda. Jaroslav, so lovely to, uh, to uh, meet you today. Also, yes, uh, let's uh, keep in touch, keep connected. And, um, and so, yes, thank you so much to everybody. And uh, we will be uh, seeing you each other very soon. Thank you.